as we begin this, I want to invite any of you that are watching us uh, and can put in the comment box, hey, I'm watching, or you want to share a prayer request, or you want to just kind of react to something that you're hearing this morning, you want to feel free, uh, I want to invite you to feel free to share that this morning. But thank you again for joining us. And uh, I want to take a moment and, and open with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, you are a good God, awesome in all you do. Father, we thank you that, that we have the technologies to be able to, to do the kind of thing we're doing this morning, that when our HVAC uh, lets us down, there are other things that we can, we can do to be able to, to have an encouraging time with the body uh, that you have allowed us to be a part of. So thank you for this. Thank you for the families that are gathered around their computers or on their devices or their TVs at home. Father, I pray that this experience will provide encouragement and joy and inspiration for your body. So we, we ask you to, to speak through us, to work in us. And Father, thank you. We give you all praise and all glory in Jesus' amazing name that we pray. Amen. So some of you are probably uh, listening in, and it's we feel like we're now back in 2020, and I feel like we're right in the middle of smack dab in the middle of the COVID thing again, but I thank the Lord that even in the middle of the trials that we went through during the COVID experience, we were able to tap into some ways of doing things that allow us the freedom that even when life throws us something, we can say, okay, we can still get a message out. And so I want to thank Stephen for helping to put all this together and, and for you, the body, for joining us together today. As you know, if you attend it in person or um you watched uh, the, the live stream the last couple of weeks. We, we are going to be walking through uh, the next couple of months the, the book of Psalms together. And so we're excited. And the book of Psalms is a very emotional read. It's a very inspirational read. Um, there are all different kinds of psalms, as we've talked about Scott shared last week, and I scared, shared a couple of weeks ago. Um, some things that they are going to be helpful as we dive into the psalms to kind of equip us as to know and understand and be able to interpret what we're reading. And so we, we'd encourage you, if you haven't listened to those messages, to go back and do so. Uh, having said that, um, <clears throat> the book of Psalms, uh, we gave homework two weeks ago. Because as we're digging into the book of Psalms, uh, as important as it is for us to read the Psalms together and to be able to understand the Psalms and to apply the book of Psalms to our lives, we wanted to challenge you, the body, to not only be able to do that, but to understand the personal nature of the Psalms and to get to the point where you are writing your own Psalms. And so we gave you homework. And the homework was simply this, to go home and to write your own Psalms. Spend time on your knees, spend time in prayer and put pen to paper, words and expressions to God um, that represent the cries of your heart. And so we challenged you to do that and already. Uh, Frankie and, and, and Pastor Scott last week shared some psalms that they wrote. And so we want to challenge you to do your homework and to be able to write your own psalm. And then, in addition to that, we want to challenge you to read those psalms or sing those psalms in front of the body because that's what they're meant to be, a part of the worship experience that we have together. So that is your homework, and uh, this morning we have a few psalms that are going to be read uh, right here, right now, and uh, now uh, because we're doing this in the comfort of my home, these are these are members of my family that are going to be sharing their psalms. But I but I hope that these will, if you have not wrote your psalm yet, encourage you to do that. So I'm going to invite Lily. Uh, Lily, come on over and bring your psalm with you. Now I don't think she's going to read it. She asked me to read it, but. I want you to sit down, sweetheart, and uh, Lily is a great writer, and um, so Lily wrote a song, and um, I'm going to read that, so thank you, you did a great job, I read this once before, and I just continue to be amazed by um, your disability to write, it's unbelievable, but here it is, and it's simple and beautiful, dear God, thank you for blessing me with everything I have, you have shown me many wonderful things that I will cherish forever because they come from you. I can't wait to see what you have in store, not only for me, but also my friends and family. Continue to guide me through life as I learn more about you. I will follow your plans through my through and through because I have faith in you. And so many of the Psalms, although you may not know this, and I think you do with expressions of faith and trust in God, I think that's a beautiful way to end your song. 
That's beautiful. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're going to get an audience clapping for you. Um, Mackenzie also wrote her song. Come on in, Mackenzie, and sit down. There was no way on earth she was going to let me read it for her. So, Mackenzie, I want you to read your song and take your time, enunciate, and, and, uh, and thank you for writing this song. Uh, my song is about a beautiful light. Um, my God who loves me never fails me. My strength is empowered by my hungry father. I have the courage to face my enemy. I have my faith through the dark times. My Holy Spirit will help me guide others to the Father above. My heart will tell me to do the right thing. That will help me shine to tell about God. Uh, he cares about everyone since birth. He is always there to guide me to the right path. He knows what is best for me. I don't have to live in fear, darkness, or shame. God has forgiven me. I don't have to fear about anything. Now come to the Father and surrender to Him. He will change your life forever. He will take away all your pains. He will wash away your sin and rise you into a new person. My love for Christ is growing, it will never end. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. You're very nice. Thank you. Um, students, that was two of our middle school students. I want to encourage you that you need to dive in and be a part of this as well. So if you're listening and you haven't written your song, um, you are next. So uh, I want to encourage you to do that. I'm going to ask you this time. Uh, you have a lot of titles, Dad. Dad, Dale, Father-in-Law, Bucca. Um, so if all of you <laughs> could join me... Um, Dale wrote a song, and I want to give you a chance uh, this morning to be able to, to not only read the song, but um, if you're able at the end of it, to ask you a couple questions on, on uh, the experience that it was going through that. So, okay. <clears throat> Father God, I humbly and fearfully beseech you to lend your ear as I offer my heartfelt praise and worship with every fiber of my being. Regardless of what happens after I pour out my sincere plea, I will always stand firm in you and trust you to the very end and worship you daily with joy. I adore you. Father, my health is failing. My body has been violated by a cancer that fights like a lion. There are days that I sense that I am losing the battle. As the cancer settles in, the unwanted guest causes me suffering and tears that come and go. I continue to allow the drugs that offend and mock my body to enter my veins, hoping that they will prolong my life, all the while looking to you, Father, for help and mercy. Please honor my request only if it is your will to do so. You see, Father, my family needs me a little longer. They have beckon me with loving hearts to continue the fight. I do this for them, not for me. My destiny is in your hands, and I trust you without question, but I'm just asking for a little more time, time to bask in the bosom of my loving family and to spend time with my Carol, my true love and friend. More time, more time. Please grant me more precious time, Father God. I will use it wisely. I will glorify you by my actions and in my conversations. I will praise you daily and be grateful for blessings large and small. And I commit to being joyful with the anticipation of joining you in heaven forever and ever. Yeah, that was, that was so beautiful. Um, and I, I want to thank you, first of all, for for sharing it, I knew I know how emotional this is for all of you, for you and for for all of our family. But and I, when I read that for the first time, when you sent it to me, like I sat there and just tears welling up in my eyes, just listening to the cries of your heart and the honest and real, in raw nature of that. So, um, what was it like when you first you sit down and you're like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put these prayers uh, to paper? Um, what was that process like as you? You wrote your own song. 
So it was to me, it was a, an interesting process. I, I enjoyed doing it. I, um, I actually sat down to begin with, uh, just created a, a very simple uh, outline. And, and then over a period of uh, several days, I would just write a little bit at a time and then pray over those words and uh, go back and try to refine it a bit. Um, but I, I, I honestly felt that uh, the Holy Spirit was with me the entire process, and uh, it's uh, a learning one for sure. Well, it, when you when you finally finished and you read it for the first time out loud to yourself, <laughs> and then I, you, you sent me the psalm, you said, hey, I don't think I can read it. You're probably going to have to go up with you. It must have hit you just the totality of what the message of that psalm is. So... Um, if you could, you know, sum that sum up in one sentence, what would it be? Well, regardless of what happens uh, in my life, God is with me. I absolutely love that, Dad. And I guess one more question, if you don't mind. Um, to those who are listening right now, and, and you've now heard uh, three songs, uh, well, actually five, three today, two last week. Um, to those who are maybe like, hey, what if I, should I, do I have the ability to do it? What would you, what would you say to those people as a word of encouragement? I would definitely encourage them to give it a try. It's um, a lot easier than, than it might be. Uh, just, you know, call upon the Lord as you, uh, as you prepare yourself and, and enjoy the process. It's a, it's a valuable one. You'll, you'll be happy that you did so. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. Um, so that's uh, that's three songs today. Three people that did their homework, and want to remind you, please do your homework. And then uh, we're pray for boldness and courage for you to be able to to do that as well. Um, and I just have a word of encouragement I want to share this morning with you. But before I share uh, my thoughts, I just want to ask you to bow for a word of prayer. So wherever you're at, if you would bow your heads and pray, that would be great. Father in heaven, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts. Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock, and our redeemer. Uh, amen. amen. I'm going to give you the choice. Dad, you can stay here or you can go and be comfortable so you're not on camera the whole time. It's your choice. Go, Thank you. Go be wherever. Um, so, uh, in my daily quiet time right now, I'm actually, I know we're doing a series on the book of Psalms. I'm actually reading through the book of, of Job right now. And it's funny, I've, I've shared that with a couple people where I've said, hey, what are you reading in Scripture? And uh, it's wild that I've come across a number of people right now that are navigating the book of Job. And the book of Job is a, it's a difficult read because of how the story starts out with, with God having this uh, encounter where he's bragging about his servant Job, who is blameless, who's right in everything he says and does, and this is a five-star guy who follows me and loves me, and you start the book, and you're like, man, this is this is a great guy. I'd love to meet a guy like Job. And then um, all of a sudden, <clears throat> Satan enters the conversation and says, oh, God, he's only great because his life is great. You start poking and pulling and prodding and, and messing with his life. He's not going to be the same person that you're seeing right now. And so God grants Satan the ability to mess with Job. And, and then the, the book takes a dark turn and tragedy hits Job's life. And his, his animals are dead. The source of, of income that he has is gone. And the roof falls in on his kids. And tragically, they pass away and word comes to Job that this has happened, but then there's this line that says, no matter what happened to Job, he did not sin in what he said and what he did. And it, like our lives, we've all had tragedy. Everyone listening right now has said things go down in their lives that you, you it would, we put it in the category of suffering because it was not easy. And so Job suffered. And we don't know how much time elapsed before another conversation takes place with God. And Satan says, yeah, you, you know what? You allowed me to mess with this family a little bit. I took away a bunch of stuff. But man, I didn't get to strike him. And God says, oh, okay. You think that's going to cause Job to, to walk away from me, to curse me, to, 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 to let sin reign in him? You have no idea how righteous this dude is. And so God says, go, go and have your way with Job. And so 
Job then is, is, he's like literally decimated. His body boils and illness, and he is now physically in a place of suffering he'd never been before. Now, we don't know how much time has elapsed, but we know it seems to be coming at Job in waves, right? And um, a level of suffering. And so when you read the book of Job, and he's crying out to God, and he enters this dialogue with three of his friends, and they're, uh, and they're trying to figure out what in the world's going on, you see some of the darkness in his thoughts as Job says things like, you know what, it would be better if I was never born. It would be better if before I took my first breath, my body passed away. Like insane things like that as he's in this place of ultimate suffering. And I know that there's a lot of you that can sympathize, maybe not with the thing necessarily that Job uh, has gone through, but your own your own pain, your own suffering, your own tribulation, your own trial, your own period of confusion. Um, I have a, um, I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of people the past week or so that I've watched so much suffering take place. I have a friend, they don't, this person does not go to our church, and I'm not going to share their name, it wouldn't be appropriate, but I have a friend that we've been meeting for the past few weeks, and uh, this friend reached out to me because um, this friend found out that that there was an affair going on in their marriage. And uh, and so while most of us were, you know, yelling Happy New Year on January 1st, this friend of mine is trying to figure out what the New Year is going to look like and how do I face the future and what's going to happen to us and the kids and is there a chance to save my marriage? And day and night thoughts are going through his head about, uh, can this even survive, or how do I deal with the images that are in my mind? And it's a form of suffering that some of you listening, you may have been down that road, and I pray that the rest of you never are. But I'm sitting here listening to him, just the cry of his heart as we have these kind of conversations, and like, like Job, he's just in a place of, of brokenness. Another friend who used to attend uh, Gateway Bible Church before we moved to Hope. The family moved away, and a couple weeks ago went into the doctor because he had some severe foot pain, and they found some severe blood clot issues going on, and like three days later, they had to amputate his foot below his leg. Went in for foot pain, and three days later, like half of his leg is gone, and since then they've discovered more, and there's been more surgeries, and they've removed more of his leg, and it's like a terrifying thing. And just in my text exchanges with this friend, just like, what in the world, man? Like, just watching and, and wondering, like, that level of suffering. And he's just in a place of brokenness as he faces this unsure future, and his reality has changed in the blink of an eye, just like Job's did. Um, I think it was Thursday night, I was heading back from a volleyball practice, and a phone call. I have a foundation called the Wholehearted Foundation that my friend Ryan and I uh, started years ago. And we partner with Children's National Medical Center, and we, we resource families, we raise all kinds of money, we work with the hospital, we get a good relationship with them, their social workers identify families in the heart and kidney unit, they could use the resourcing, but we do it for the purpose of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's it's who we are, it's what we do. And, um, and so, yeah, we may pay mortgages or rents and give people groceries as the rug has literally been pulled out from under them and they have no idea. They went from some of these families having a, uh, what they thought was a healthy, normal child to all of a sudden they're spending months living bedside with their hospital fighting for their lives. And a couple weeks ago, we got a, a file about a mom and a dad who they had triplets and two of the kids were kids were healthy and one of the little kids his name was Leo they named him was not and so when Leo was born immediately they uh, rushed him to Children's National Medical Center and began the surgical process trying to save this kid's life and they've been in the hospital now for a few months and the dad called my phone the other day and there had been a number of complications a number of times where the doctors sat them down and said we're not sure if your child is going to make it and, uh, and, but the child pulled through and Leo's a fighter and time and time again, uh, they went through the emotional roller coaster of thinking this is going to be it, but no, there's hope. And, 
Um, recently, there was a negative turn, and Leo was put on ECMO, and he was on ECMO so long there was brain damage, and as a result of being on ECMO so long, um, now they're worried because now that he's off of the ECMO machine, the ends of his fingers and toes are extremely purple, and they're looking at most likely amputation. This family still does not know whether their child will make it or not. And they're trying to figure out life, and how do I take care of these two kids, and, and how do I, and, and he's on the phone just crying to me about the pain that he's going through. Like the, the struggles and challenges in front of these people, the unpredictable nature of life, the uncertain future, and the kind of things that Job was thrown into the middle of. And so as I think about this, I started imagining, partly because we're in the middle of this series and I'm, I'm working on these messages, what would their songs look like? If they were to put pen to paper, what would the cries of their heart look like? Last week, we put Kiera on stage. She's at a different place in her life. She's in Nicaragua right now, and she's there for a few months. She left friends and family in the comfort of this country to just go share the gospel with people, and she's going to run into challenges and maybe loneliness or times of fear or confusion or wonder, and there's going to be thrilling moments of excitement as people surrender to Jesus. And I wonder what her psalms as she goes through this journey, will sound like. It's interesting, as I've been reading the book of, of Job, it, I'll, I'll read a chapter or two, and then I'll stop and just ponder about the heaviness of the dialogue and the, the cries of his heart as he pours out. But I, I have found myself, as I finish the book of Job each morning, a chapter or two, immediately flipping over to the next book in the Bible, which is the book of Psalms. And there's something about the Psalms, and I feel like when I'm done reading Job, man, I need a psalm or two to build into me. And because the Psalms, over and over again, even though there's suffering, even though there's pain, even though there's confusion, even though there's fear, so much of the time, whether it's David or Asaph or one of the other uh, psalmists that are writing, there's a statement of trust and hope and belief. The book of Psalms is fascinating. A hundred times in the book of Psalms, the word praise is used. A hundred times. The word trust is used, a form of the word trust, 71 times. I think 37 times it says, give thanks. I think the word rejoice is used like almost 50 times. You think about that. Give thanks, and, and I praise you, God, and, and, and I rejoice in what you're doing over and over again. It's the resounding message of the book of Psalms that in the middle of the circumstances, in the middle of the trials, no matter what they are, God, I'm going to find a way. The same thing Dale said in the Psalm today, no matter what it is, God, here's the deal. Forever and ever, I will praise you. I will praise you. I want to finish this morning reading a psalm that ends that way. It's a beautiful psalm. It's Psalm 20, um, and it's a psalm of trust, which is, I guess, what we're encouraging all of you to do, whatever stage of life you find yourself in, is to not only cry out to God and be raw and real in your expressions to Him, whether it's a time of suffering, whether it's a time of thankfulness, whether it's a time of fear, whatever it is, whatever season, we're asking you to just be raw and real before God. Maybe you're extremely angry at something going on. That's fine. It's okay. Like God created us to be able to have this emotion called anger. Yeah, in Scripture we're told things like, hey, in your anger do not sin. But man, if it's anger you're feeling, then, then you need to put pen to paper. You need to express your anger to God. You can handle it. He, he can handle whatever it is, the emotion that is surging through your body. But I do want you to know, as a pastor, as a friend, our, our staff, our leadership team want you to know that in spite of it all, you have a God that you can trust. Psalm 20 says this. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. Like, that's something I'm praying for you. That's something your leadership team are praying for you. That whatever you are crying out to God, that God will answer you. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all of your offerings and regard with favor your birth sacrifices. I 
have had enough conversations with you and members of our church to know you have given and you have sacrificed and you have served. Some of you listening today, you're not in a kid's room because it's like 20 degrees in the classroom, which is why we are doing this. But this past fall and this past year and the past number of years, you give up so much of your time and energy and you serve and you sacrifice and you pour into our kids or on Sunday night our students or, or the tech people that you don't see them unless there's an issue on Sunday morning and all the heads at the same time turn to look at the sound booth. But they're there super early on Sunday mornings giving our worship team that's rehearsing the people that take care of, of the finances of the church. There's so much that goes on. Members of, of this church have been taking meals to people in our congregation that are suffering. Like it's unbelievable how you sacrifice. I love that prayer. May God see your sacrifice and respond to your prayer praise in your prayer. May, verse 4, may he grant your heart's desire and fulfill all of your plans. Your plans, your heart's desires, they matter to God. May we shout for joy over your salvation in the name of our God. Set up your banners. May the Lord fulfill all of your petitions. By the way, uh, in, when I hear that word, may the Lord fulfill all of your petitions, I think of Psalm 5, which we're going to dive into next week. And so a little bit of an advance notice, if you want to go ahead and read Psalm 5 in preparation for next week's message, go ahead and do that. Verse 6, now I know the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. It's my favorite part coming up in the psalm. This is so beautiful. Psalm <laughs> Some will trust in chariots, others will trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Love that. There's all kinds of things we can put our trust in. We can, we can put our trust in our bank account. Hey, money's coming in, I'm feeling good about things, our bank is in a good place, and our, our jobs are secure. You can put your trust in that. There are no guarantees that it will last, and one day you may have it, and the next day you, you will not. And if you put your trust in your bank account, or people, you can put your trust in people, but people fail you. All the time, we fail each other. We, we were filled with, with, with flaws, and, and we stumble and bumble ourselves through life. You can try putting your faith in people. Uh, you, could, you could put your faith in in, in the technologies that our world offers. Here we are having a live stream because we aren't able to do church uh, this morning in our facility because of the temperature. And so many of us live with our, with our, our electronics in our hands and, and we're addicted in a lot of ways. You can put your faith in electronics, but let me tell you what, at some point, if you put your faith and your trust in those things, they will let you down. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, <laughs> but we rise and stand upright. Wow, O oh Lord, save the king. May he answer us when we call. And I guess that's the final prayer as you cry out to God. May the Lord answer your call. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, and uh, we love you guys, and I also want to pray as we, we close this time of, of digital fellowship together. <laughs> Father in heaven, just thank you. You are so good. Thank you for your word that teaches and informs and encourages and sometimes rebukes. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, for this new presence we have, for the identity we have in Christ. Thank you for your book of Psalms that, that as we dive into this and we walk through them together, Father, will hopefully bring about inside of our church a season of sharing and confession and thankfulness and praise and openness and encouragement. I pray that, Father, as people are sharing their Psalms, that different people in our church will be able to build new relationships with each other because we're opening our hearts before you, but not just that, before each other. Father, thank you most importantly for what you did on the cross. You sent your son, you paid the price. And so this conversation we're having today is possible because and only because of you. In Jesus' name we pray.